But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That's from Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1-3. to three. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved for ever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Hello, and welcome to Hold Fast Thy Word. We are so glad that you could join us today. We are here to help share the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, whose name is called the Word of God. My name is Stephen. And I'm Nicole. Today we are reading the general epistle of Jude. The writer may have been one of the twelve apostles, brother of James, son of Alphaeus. Jude's nicknames were Thaddeus and Labaeus, meaning a man of heart. If you would like to read along, open your King James Bible to the very end. You will find Jude right before Revelation. Jude is a little book of the Bible, just one chapter long, but it contains a mighty message that is echoed in the letters of Peter, John, and Paul. The early church knew to warn believers to be on guard against ungodly men and false teachers. Listen to Paul in Acts 20, verses 28 to 31. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Jude understood this need to hold fast and contend for the faith. When he starts his open letter to believers, he wants to write about the wonderful salvation that Jesus Christ has wrought for us, for those who turn to him. However, we will never really know Jude's particular thoughts on salvation, because by the time he gets his papyri and writing implements together and sits down at a table to write, the Holy Spirit had moved Jude in a different direction. Jude found it became needful to warn believers about false teachers, wolves in sheep's clothing, deceiving the flock. He starts by giving some examples of those who had departed from the Word of God in the past. He warns us that God destroys lies and corruption and false teaching. And Jude gives us three main examples from the Old Testament. The unbelieving Israelites after they left Egypt the fallen angels of Genesis 6, as well as the corruption in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Next, the character of these false teachers is laid out for us to see. And Jude reminds us that Enoch prophesied of these apostates. An apostate is one who departs from the faith. An apostle keeps the faith. And that's how Jude concludes his epistle, by encouraging us to keep the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, once delivered to us by his apostles. Let's begin our reading today with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in the wonderful gift of your salvation, and we'd love to just praise you all day long without a care. But help us today to hear Jude as your Holy Spirit moved him to speak to us about the tougher things happening in the faith today. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. The General Epistle of Jude Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for ever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. That's the book of Jude. He certainly paints a clear picture of apostasy in the church. Let's review some character traits of these wolves in sheep's clothing. If we go to verses 8 through 10, Jude says, These filthy dreamers had no true understanding of the powers that be, and corrupt themselves. Peter says the same thing in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government 
presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Another aspect of apostates is in Jude verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. Basically, the problem with Cain was that he did things his own way, self-centered, arrogant, rejecting the way God had planned for redemption, the sacrifice of a lamb, which Abel brought and offered. Balaam used God's gift of prophecy for money, profit, and prestige. Koray is an example of one who consistently rejects God's authority. Gainsaying, which literally means to go against, gain, the word, saying. Thankfully, Jude, in verse 17 through to the end, gives us hope and guidelines on how to protect the faith once delivered. He says, Remember ye the words. Hold fast, so to speak, to that which was spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter says the same thing in Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. In both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of the apostles, of the Lord and Saviour. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. The Apostle John, in Second John verses 7 through 11, states, for many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed, for he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Thanks for listening today. You can contact us at Hold Fast Thy Word, P.O. Box 477, Salt Spring Island, British Columbia, Canada, V8K 2W1. We will close with some scripture verses. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. See you next time, folks. God bless. <laughs>